Peace, y'all. Peace, peace. Um, I want to talk about something today, man. That's very important, but um, nobody is really paying attention to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're gonna talk about uh, the rapper Prodigy from Mob Deep. Um. This video is not to disrespect the dead or to uh, slander his name or, you know, make false accusations. You know, this is just a theory of mine. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily true, but it's just a theory. Um, but I do have some questions about how he died. And, um, you know, you know, we got to just figure this out, man. You know what I'm saying? Because... You know, Prodigy had a very deep message uh, behind his music and his actions, the way he carried himself. And, um, you know, this is no way, shape, form, or fashion to offend his family or anything of that nature or anybody affiliated with Prodigy. You know what I'm saying? Um, Prodigy is, is definitely, definitely influential uh, in my life. Definitely. Word. So, um... We're going to talk about it, man. Um, was Prodigy an industry plant? You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it, it's possible. It's possible that, you know, Prodigy was placed in the industry. Um, you know, and, you know, same thing. But, you know, you, know, you guys got to understand something about with these child stars. You know what I'm saying? Like... You know, they don't ask to come into this business. Somebody brings them in here. You know what I mean? Whether it be a parent or or a, a, a guardian or somebody. You know what I'm saying? It, this is, this is a, a, a repetitive cycle. And we're going to break it down. So, um, Prodigy, known as uh, Albert Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we don't need no history on him or where he was born. But Prodigy's father... Uh, Bud Johnson um, was one of the singers in the Chanters. All right, so the Chanters was a group that uh, came out in 1957, but they had broke up in like 1961. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not sure why they broke up or what was the reason, but um, his father Bud Johnson um, was definitely in. You know what I'm saying? The music business. You know what I mean? So, you know, we, we just going to attribute that to one one thing also. Um, also, Prodigy's mother, Fatima Johnson, um, was also a singer in the group The Crystals. So, you know, now you have, you have both parents, right? Both parents are involved in the music business, okay? So, um, is, there's no telling what oaths they may have taken or, you know... Respectfully, I'm not being disrespectful, but there's no telling uh, what organizations their parent, his parents were a part of before they became in. Um, uh, also, you know, uh, and and if any of the any of these people are, are deceased, respectfully, you know, what I'm saying, I, I my condolences to y'all. I'm not trying to speak ill on the dead. All right, I'm just I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this situation here. Um, so. Prodigy also, Prodigy's grandmother, right, uh, Bernice Johnson, uh, also was involved in the music business as well. Um, if you read Prodigy's book, My Infamous Life, he spoke on how his mother, his grandmother was very rich. And, um, you know, she, you know, she drove around in Rolls Royces and fur coats. This was back in the 70s now. You know what I'm saying? This was back in the 70s. So... You know, for people to have that kind of money back in the 70s, you know, they either was a part of an organization or they were somebody famous. I mean, um, his his grandmother actually had a, a school, a uh, dance school called a Cultural Arts Center at the time, which is now the Edge School of the Arts. Um, you know, and um, this was in Queens that, you know, her, her dance school was. You know, he spoke on the, in the book of how Ashanti was there. Um, you know, he met Emmanuel Lewis, um, you know, all type of people. Michael Jackson, he, he spoke on this as he was a kid and he met 
um, a lot of famous entertainers as a child. So Prodigy has been around in the industry uh, since a young man, since a young individual. So, you know, this this is a possibility that they were trying, you know, that not trying, but they groomed him for the industry. Um, you know, he didn't grow up tough. He didn't have a hard life. You know what I'm saying? He grew up fine. He grew up rich, pretty much. Uh, Prodigy had money as as a child. He did not grow up poor. OK, so when when, the, um, you know, you you hear his songs um, about him reflecting at a ghetto. You know, these are things that, you know, like I said, you have to be a great entertainer. You know what I'm saying? You have to make up, even if you have to make up a story, it has to sound believable. So, you know, you would think that Prodigy grew up poor and didn't have nothing and stuff like that, but he was very uh, financially stable. Um, um, Prodigy got his first start uh, on the soundtrack of Boys in the Hood. Um, with the with the group, uh, I think it was uh, High Five or something like that. You know, she too she too young or something. The name of the song was, but um, he was in he was he, his song was featured on there. They didn't give him no credit, but he somehow managed to get on that song. So he had no rap name. Um, he had no rap name. He had no group, no no history of writing music. He somehow. Managed to get on the soundtrack of Boys in the Hood. Now ask yourself, how easy would it be to get on a soundtrack to a movie with without having any experience in the music business? Um, this is because, you know, like I said before, you know, industry plant, somebody brings you in. You get what I'm saying? Doesn't mean that, you know, you, you, uh, you know, you, you sit for a certain class of individuals. You, that means that somebody brings you in, right? They bring you in and now, you know, they groom you. So, you know, this was, this mind you, this came out in, this, I think that movie came out in 1991 or something like that, or 92. But yeah, it's, it, you know, that's kind of odd that, you know, he randomly just got on a song with a with a popular group at the time. Um, in his book, he doesn't give any details on how he got that connection. He just says um, he uh, I think he said he 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 uh, rehearsed for it or something and, you know, made a con. I don't know, but it, it just kind of odd. All right. So after his uh, feature on the Boys in the Hood soundtrack, he uh, signed to Fourth and Broadway and recorded the album Juvenile Hell with Havoc. So, you know, this when he was going to. Uh, the School of Art and Design in Manhattan. He met Havoc, but you should already know his life story. I'm gonna get down to the basis of it. You get what I'm saying? Um, now, when you go on uh, the, the the record label uh, Fourth and Broadway, which also uh, Rakim and Eric B was signed to, um, you had so many other people. You know what I mean? He was over there with some high hitters on Fourth and Broadway, and they recorded Juvenile Hell. Uh, which came out, I don't know what year that came out, maybe 93. So 93, 94, sometime around there. Um, yeah, and, 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 you know, that's where, that's where, you know, he got his first start. So now you got an individual that did not, that did not have any, 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 his, any history in the music business. I mean, he's literally a young man, like 14 years old. Him and Havoc were like 14, 15. And, you know, their mom, Prodigy's mom, walks him into a record label and he gets a deal. Um, back in these days, you know, you you could walk up to a label and get a meeting. You know what I'm saying? Times were different back then, but you still had to know somebody. Um, you couldn't just walk into a label without any, you know, um, mind you, the security was lax back then because... Uh, being a rapper was very popular, but it just was like, ah, eh, you know, it wasn't as it wasn't as oversaturated as it is now. So, um, you know, that was definitely um, something something that we should look into. His mom, like I said, was in the music business, so you know, probably was nothing for her to just go and say, hey, you know, my son wants a deal, hook him up. You know what I mean? Um, so now, uh, Prodigy gets older, you know what I'm saying? And I'm guessing, I'm guessing, you know, I'm guessing on my terms that um, somebody had introduced him between the time of him recording Juvenile Hell and um, 
him him doing uh what was the name of that album? Infamous, the infamous, you know. So sometime in between there, it was a drastic change in the prodigy. Uh they started become I mean, even though Juvenile Hell, that album was very violent. Um it, the so the track listing on that album was very negative and violent. So here's the thing, right? Um when when Prodigy signed to Fourth and Broadway, you know what I'm saying, you know, he made an agreement with who, I don't know, but he made an agreement um, to follow an agenda, okay? So this is why, you know, y- you listen to the infamous album and all the songs on there are negative, okay? Um, 1995, right, is the, the, the year that Who Shot You came out. Okay, this is where Prodigy says, Illuminati want my mind, soul, and my body, secret society trying to keep an eye on me. Okay, um, when he said that line, that brought a lot of unwanted attention to him. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jay Z la- later wound up sampling that song, which would um, actually immortalize that statement he made on record. Okay, um, nobody really remembers any verse. On that LL Cool J song, besides that line um, that Prodigy made, okay? So, that was kind of like putting the forefront on him, you know what I'm saying? Um, now, if you've read Dr. Malakazi York books, um, you know Malachi, uh, Dr. Malakazi York uh, also mentioned the Illuminati and things of such. Um, you know, he was, he was very uh, informative about these type of organizations, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know too much about Malachi Z. York, but I do know that he um, he definitely played a major part in hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Especially in uh, Jay Z's uh, Jay Z's background of music. You know what I mean? He was in the New Wapian, uh, New Wapian, uh, you know that that clan, whatever. All right, so. Now, um, years later, Prodigy gets locked up, you know what I'm saying? And then he writes a statement from jail attacking the corrupt government and uh, rappers that are down with the agenda also, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, he, he took a jab at Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying? This, and mind you, this is all after, you know, the, the, the beef between him and Jay-Z and this records back and forth. You know, so um, you got to remember these are things that that uh, play a major part in Prodigy's life. Prodigy's, you know, he's getting into scuffles and getting into stuff, and you know, what I'm saying, and and you know, he was a tough individual. I can't, I can't lie. Prodigy was a very tough individual. Um, a lot of things that Prodigy went through, um, the average rapper today would not be able to to withstand any of that. You know what I mean? So, especially still having a career. You know what I mean? Um, Prodigy was definitely somebody that was a very strong individual. And, you know, I I think people were afraid of that. You know what I'm saying? I think they were afraid that he was fearless. He spoke his mind. You know what I'm saying? And he was passionate about what he believed in. You know, um, I think at this point when he mentioned the Illuminati, um, that kind of was like, nah, I'm not with it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, because most people will go along with it. But, you know, to, to kind of like shed light on this organization, um, it kind of was like a rebellious. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was rebellious. I mean, listen to the lyrics. You know, um, Illuminati want my mind, soul, and my body. Secret society. They're trying to keep an eye on me. You know what I'm saying? Meaning they're watching him. So, um they wasn't watching the, the the listeners. They're watching him. Okay, so this is where you have to pay attention to. Um, it could have been his mom or his dad, whoever, um, or you know, grandparent, whoever. You know what I'm saying? They 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 may have been watching him. Okay, so um, at a very young age, possibly as well. So um, uh, so now when he comes home from jail, right? He comes home from jail, because we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. Um, he released the book, My Infamous Life, uh, which was a biography that told his story 
in the lives of others. Now, this book, this book kind of made him a target um, by his peers. You know what I'm saying? Because he gave a lot of street stories that was supposed to, you know, stay in the streets and not be put out, you know, to to the public. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a lot of things that were in that book that could have uh, incriminated a few people, but um, I guess Prodigy was familiar with the statute of limitations. Somebody may have told him, um, but he definitely used he he used people's actual names in the book. Uh, there was, you know, it was kind of like a memoir, if you want to be, you know, exact. It wasn't really a biography. It was more like a memoir. Um, you know, this could also be taken as a, um, you know, it could be flipped uh, in the sense of him being a part of the CIA. You know what I mean? And documenting certain events of crime. You know what I mean? Because if you've ever read that book, you know, you know that certain it, it draws you in because it's a lot of street things that people wouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, if you've if you've been in the street, you know what I'm saying, you know that certain things shouldn't be said, you know what I mean? And um Prodigy had no problem explaining this. So, I mean, there's you have you have double a double edge. He could, you know, it could be a part of the CIA situation or, you know, um, he could have just been exploiting certain, you know, certain things. But, you know, I, I, I me personally, um, I felt that the stories in there were very uh, intriguing. You know what I mean, but, you know, he could have focused mainly more on his story um, instead of putting uh, certain street topics in there. Uh, kind of made him a target. You know what I'm saying? Um, just my personal opinion. All right. So, um at this point, um, you know, he's in the books explaining about, you know, uh, these organizations and how they're playing with the food and they're messing with the music and everything like that. So he's, you know, he's he's rebelling at this point. You know what I'm saying? He's rebelling at this point, you know. And then, you know, you had, you had his, his uh, partner in crime, Havoc, completely do a 180 on him, you know what I'm saying, and, and flip the script on him. Um, all because of uh, the things that Prodigy had mentioned uh, in the book in reference to, um, Havoc's brother or what have you, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, he stepped on a lot of people's toes with that book, you know what I'm saying? Uh, definitely pissed a lot of people off, but I don't think more or less it was the, um, the exposing of the, uh, Illuminati or the music industry that got Prodigy put in hot water. Um, I think it was this album right here, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the Hegelian uh, dialectic, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's this is what got him in trouble with the higher ups. Okay, this 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 album right here was pretty much explaining everything. Um, as you see, it says the Book of Revelation. So Prodigy foreseen um, the plan that was uh, taking place. You know, and you know what I'm saying. You know, if you listen to this album. Um, he drops a few hints in there. Now he doesn't put it all the way out there. You know what I mean? He still throws the uh, throws the poison in there. You know what I'm saying? But you know he he definitely um, he definitely uh, gets you know drops some hints in there for for people to to do their research. All right. Um, if you listen to this album, he's pretty much rebelling against the industry. You know what I'm saying? So I think you know at a point where he said he. Um, he pawned in all of his jewelry. You know what I'm saying? He he was pretty much done with the industry. You know what I mean? Um, you know, he was signed to G Unit and, you know, fifty had them looking crazy. You know what I'm saying? I think that was the worst deal they ever took. Uh was when Mob Deep went to G Unit. That was probably the worst deal that they ever could have taken. You know what I'm saying? It it just made them look real commercialist. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the hell that was about. Um, so Alright, so Prodigy died June 20th, 2017. You know what I'm saying? After, mind you, this is weird. After the show in Vegas, okay? So, him and Havoc, they did a show out there in Vegas uh, with Ghostface, KRS1, all of these dudes, you know what I'm saying? And after the show in Vegas, apparently Prodigy has a sickle cell attack, okay? Now, if you know... If, well, if you read the book, you know that Prodigy mentioned in the book that um, he was working out and, and changed his diet 
and he had no more sickle cell panics. Okay, it's no more sickle cell uh, panics happened for him. Um, um, you know, he just he was good at that point. You know what I'm saying? He started eating healthy. He was good. Um, I'm not too familiar with Prodigy's health before he passed away or what was going on with him. But he, every time I did see him do an interview, he did look healthy. Okay, he didn't look like he was, you know, sick or going having pain or issues like that. He always looked healthy. All right. Um, I just find this very odd. Okay, that you know they saying that he choked on an egg. Um, if you know, okay, if you know that um, somebody, uh, you know, and I'm not saying that this can't happen. You know, what I'm saying, but. Um, if somebody is you, you boil an egg or scramble an egg, you know that's not really um, easy to, you know it's it's not it's not easy to choke on an egg. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, unless there was some type of poison placed in the egg. Okay. Um, now he was in good shape. Okay, he was in good shape. You know what I'm saying? Um, Apparently he had been rushed to the hospital after at mind you here's the weird part after the show okay so that means he got paid to do the show he did the show and then all of a sudden after his time was up he got sent to the hospital okay uh, I think they stopped the show because he the show was still going on but I think they I think he they stopped the show if I'm not mistaken um, after he performed and him and Havoc performed he was sent to the hospital okay. So, um, Mob Beat was paid for the show, and then, you know, he was sent on to the hospital for a sickle cell attack, okay? So, now, we don't know, we don't know if Prodigy actually choked on an egg or somebody poisoned his food. Um, my belief, I believe somebody poisoned his food, okay? Um, I just can't picture him sitting up there eating an egg. And choking and, you know, nobody calls a nurse and does the Heimlich maneuver. You choke on an egg in the hospital. Um, there's not one nurse that can do CPR, the Heimlich maneuver to help you. I mean, you just choke on an egg in the hospital. Okay. So, you know, this is the same thing they did with Old Dirty Bastard. Okay. Um, and Pimp C. Um, you know, you got to be careful. If, you, if you're a target, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you got to be, you got to watch who's prepping your food. You know what I'm saying? I, I, one artist mentioned this before. I can't remember who, but somebody mentioned that um, Michael Jackson, excuse me, Michael Jackson um, mentioned that he was afraid that they would poison his food. All right. Um, I believe that Prodigy was poisoned. OK, I don't know who did it, but I believe somebody put something in his food. The same thing that they did with Old Dirty Bastard. Old Dirty Bastard was um, taking drugs the day before he passed, and um, somebody gave him a bad batch, okay? Uh, same thing with Pimp C. Um, the story is all over the place with Pimp C. Apparently, um, they're saying that the woman had uh, gave him some bad stuff, you know what I'm saying? But do your history on this. Do your history on it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't steer you in the wrong direction. All right, so um, I just think that you know, it's all a crock of mess, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, after he passed away, um, you know, they, they put up a mural of him in Queensbridge and uh, they kept throwing red paint on it, you know what I'm saying? They kept throwing red paint, not once, not twice, I think it was probably two or three times they they threw paint on it. Now, Queensbridge did not hate Prodigy that much, you know what I'm saying? They didn't hate him that much, you know what I mean? Um... I think this was uh, a higher up that had paid somebody to do this, all right? So, you know, you guys got to do your research and your due diligence on this type of stuff, man. And, um, yeah, man, I just, you know, I, I just want to do, I think we should do more research into this, man. Um, it, it, it's, it's not, it's not, it can't be real, all right? Um, I want to, I want to, uh, Thank everybody for subscribing and supporting. You know what I mean? First and foremost, I want to thank y'all um, for uh, like, comment, sharing um, my videos. Everybody that's also um, signed up to Patreon and 
members of the page. Um, I'm going to start doing more videos, you know, for for my members and people on Patreon. Um, you know, going to give a more private private type of videos you know what i mean so um yeah man just comment share like subscribe all of that good stuff man and um if you have any um pointers on what may happen may have happened to prodigy man leave your comments below man and uh let's figure it out all right peace